Flowers are as rare as violet eyes. Yes. They really are. And they're as rare as our very own Shirley Bob Ooh. Shaw. Yes. And as in a rare good as me singing on pitch. And, 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 yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's even key. rarer than blue yeah. flowers, I yeah. think. But Shirley Bob Shaw is here to tell us, to give us the scoop yeah. on why they are blue and where we can get blue flowers. Right. They are really the most rare color flower why in though? nature. Why? Because you got to think about it. The purpose of a flower is to attract a pollinator. So if if it's a, a color that is uh, like red or yellow, yeah. it's gonna get a lot of pollinators, it's gonna get the bees, it's gonna get birds pollinating it. But if you're blue and you have a very little contrast with the greenery around you sure. and the sky, uh, only certain pollinators will be able to see it. And in this instance, blue flowers are usually pollinated so by bees. Of, is, is by bees. To it is, yeah. and it's very, very interesting because bees have ultraviolet uh, vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, violet, blue, yeah. they could actually see, like, for instance, on this, if this were to be actually blue, they would have, uh, because this is, I'm going to tell you in a second, this is artificially colored, but they have ultraviolet, like, little lines that we can't see with our eyes that is kind of like a track leading all the way to here to the pollen. And that is oh. invisible to our eyes. And to birds. Oh. Birds can't see and it. And birds can't see it, but the bees can. So That's it's because there's not as many pollinators. Well, that is why. How can we find blue flowers without dying them? Well, you know, there are <laughs> there are naturally occurring yeah. blue flowers, but because they're so rare, it's about 10% of all flowering flowers are colored flowers are blue. And so you go find in our industry, we call a periwinkle, or like these flowers here, the scabiosa, we find a light lilac. That's all considered blue, but if you want blue, florists dye these. Can you see the water here? I know On it. the mums? And you know what? All I did was I brought these home and I put them in water and the water started turning yeah. blue. You can see how it was dyed. Wait, did you put them in blue water and that's no, what happened? I didn't. they were blue and that's yeah, how it, it turned the water? Because oh. that's that's what the florists have done. They've, they've put this into solution. But really fascinating with the blue orchids, almost every breeder who wants to create a blue plant, they have their own proprietary blend of chemicals oh, and system sure. to create it blue. And nobody tells anybody how they got the orchid blue. It, does that come up through the stem as well, or is that it, painted on? No, that comes from the soil the, and the, the way it's fed, and it's got special formulas. Oh, okay. But well, I know your proprietary formula is baking soda. Yeah, well, <laughs> I want to show you something that's also interesting. In order, uh, blue plants, they real, there really isn't a blue pigment in nature because that makes this more even more rare. But there is red pigment. And red pigment, let me show you, on a red flower like this, the only way that they can create a blue plant is if they play with a plant that is red, like hydrangeas are, can, can be pink or red, and then they manipulate the cells. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crush this, and I'm gonna add a little bit of acidic uh -huh. baking soda. Okay. And so the red pigment is very, very oh sensitive. Oh my gosh, it's turning it's blue! Yeah, oh. it's sensitive that? to acidity. So, so as this you is can how they see, make them blue? With the baking soda? It, well, that's, no, not with baking soda, but with a type of an addition, an amendment. Can you guys see that? I mean, if yeah. I kept doing this. Right. I'm going to give you a bunch of blue smashed up flowers. Oh, gosh. For just a nice oh, so you can have that. blue, I'd be right? honored. <laughs> so really, the science of a blue flower is a plant that has an underlying red pigment that has become very, very vulnerable to the soil mm -hmm. level of the pH. It has to be really right. acidic, like your hydrangea. Right. I mean, well, not, I thought my hydrangea, my plumbago. Right. Well, let's talk about the soil and yes. how that relates to. Well, the, the color. soil is all the nutrients that a plant is going yeah. to take up, and so if the soil level, the pH is acidic, acidity, then it will make a plant like a hydrangea much open up. The cell system right. opens up, and it was able to draw it, and then it manipulates that red pigment and causes it to turn blue. So that's why but you have everything? to add something. But will everything turn blue then if it's acidic? Well, not every plant, because every plant is different, has yeah. a different cell structure, but certainly for the hydrangea. But I want to show you, there are naturally occurring blue okay. plants. For instance, this beautiful little low, fluffy lobelia. You can find this all across yeah, the country. so pretty. In yeah. your garden center, and it's beautiful to use as a mounding plant or something right. here in your, in your uh, plant. It falls really nice. It falls beautiful. And look at this one, guys. The Cape Plumbago is like a baby blue color. Oh, Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And now that one you can put as a potted plant. That one you can grow up against 
against a wall like a uh, but timer. But are these naturally blue or are these? These are naturally blue, okay. but there's a fun one and a lot of you at home may have, you know, a pink or a white hydrangea. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is a known plant that if it's planted in very acidic soil, it will turn. Ken, can you show us a blue yep. flower? There we go. It will turn blue. So a lot of people love blue Ooh. hydrangeas, but they really don't know how to get it. And if you plant this in your ground yeah. and it stays blue, or if it's a pink one and turns blue, you, you have, have acidic, acidic soil. soil. My though, mother right? only plants her hydrangeas underneath in Georgia, underneath the pine trees. Oh, right. So the all, pine and they're all turned beautiful blue because that's why she does it. The pine needles. But right. we can manipulate things. So I want to, you, you want to help me to plant yep. this? Yep, 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 yep. And you while, you're doing, this, not? while you're nope. doing this, Shirley, is this, so you're adding. Yes, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I have a soil mix here that is an acid blend. Like you see here, you can okay. actually buy soil that is acidic. Let's open this up a little bit. I got it. I got, got you, it. Baby. I'm getting my nails dirty. <laughs> okay. And so when Ken does that, he's going to put this in. And so in order to keep this hydrangea from reverting back to pink, uh -huh. I'm going to add a little soil acidifier. And what it has is a little bit of sulfate or sulfur. And ammonia yeah. is a source. Yeah, I want to open this up. Fine. Ammonia is a source of sulfur, which acidifies your soil. So I'm going to just follow the instructions of how much to put in a big one here. It's about a half a cup. And would we have to do this seasonally or once that yes. uh, once it's that level it's No, gonna... you know what? Once a month if you want to maintain a blue hydrangea, you want to continue adding the soil acidifier. So you mean to tell turn me more that... blue and more blue every month. But does that mean that the soil won't eventually just become acidic? No, it you won't. Have to keep you know, doing it. it's interesting because that's the food. That's what this eats is is the is the it's nutrients in the soil. soil. So it starts to leach if I water it a lot. So you got to put more it, in. It just leaks out to Putting yeah, in. you got to keep putting this. And wait, in. did I misunderstand you? The more you add, the bluer it gets. Yes, every no month way. it becomes more. It, 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 it's a like a base, blue. like a base tan. Oh, really? Can we understand it, that? Yeah, oh, yeah, we got it's, it. it's Now you're talking. Like, okay, now we're, we're <laughs> talking the language, right? A, if you have a base tan and you add another tan to it, <laughs> you get darker and then yeah. could it get look this, beautiful. Could it become this blue? It, could they? It's a lot of work, but if you're a real geek. And you really watch over your plants, especially in a potted plant, because in a pot you can you manipulate can the soil, that right? More, right. Yeah. And you can every month say, "I want to go for a little darker blue." Add a little more acidifier, but always the amount that it says right. on here. Not but you can also get the like I love yeah. it when it's like the in between, like half blue, half green. Yes. I don't. I don't. I, I like, like, I like me too. I, I like you want blue. Well, what's interesting is that even within one plant, the different cells in each of these petals, this could be different type of cell than the cell here, and this one might be more uh, susceptible and vulnerable oh, to that change that. of color oh. than this one. So you got a little right, you know, bright blue and light blue. Sure. 